years ago. Crystal Rogers, a mother of five, vanished from her idyllic Kentucky town, seemingly into thin air. A new Oxygen series now dives into the disappearance of Crystal Rogers and another shocking tragedy that would soon follow. Watch. Here is Bardstown, Kentucky, with a population just below 14,000 people. Bardstown has always been a nice little town. We've never had any problem here. Once even named the most beautiful small town in America. But in July 2015, it went from beautiful to chilling. On July the 3rd, 2015, I got a phone call. At that minute, I just panicked. Sherry Ballard's 35-year-old daughter, Crystal Rogers, had vanished. Crystal's car was found abandoned on the Bluegrass Parkway with a flat tire. Everything from her cell phone to her purse, even the keys, left inside. But the devoted mother of five, gone. I was starting to fall apart in the living room. I'm like, there's something wrong. I'm telling y'all, I've been telling y'all all weekend, there's something wrong. Volunteers searched the area. Signs of support lined the highway. A six-figure reward offered for her safe return. But still, no trace of Crystal. Her boyfriend, Brooks Houck, named a suspect, but never arrested or charged. Denied any involvement. Her parents took matters into their own hands. From the minute that my daughter started missing, my husband was like the investigator. Crystal's father, Tommy Ballard, diligently searched for any sign of his missing daughter. As for her mother, her living nightmare was about to get even worse. Just 16 months after Crystal's disappearance, Tommy was shot and killed while hunting on family property. I knew in my heart it was no accident. A small town with big mysteries still left unsolved. Joining me now, Sherry Ballard, Crystal's mom, and her younger sister, Brooke Bryan. Thank you both so much for being here. So can I start with you on this, Brooke? So Crystal was your older sister. Yes. And you saw her a couple of days before her disappearance. Yes, I saw her that Wednesday. And what did she say to you about her future plans at that time? Um, she was planning on starting a new job and moving out and leaving the father of her child. Whose name is Brooks? Yes. She was, so she was going to leave him? She was going to leave him. And she told you that? Yes. And you had seen, Sherry, some problems between Brooks and Crystal's oldest child, right? Yes, ma'am. What had happened? Um, her oldest child had went over there for a little while, and he was trying to get a phone from her, and in the meantime, in the process, he twisted her wrist and sprained her wrist. Okay. Was there abuse in their marriage? <laughs> One time, he... They had went to, they had some guns where they had shot like turkey, how you shoot those clay pigeons. And he switched her shell out with a turkey shell or something where it would kick real hard. And it kicked her shoulder and it put a big bruise on her shoulder. And she showed that to me and I was kind of upset about that. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I, I, I didn't know anything person between those two, physical abuse. And I shouldn't say marriage, right? They weren't married. No, They were living they together. Yes, ma'am. Um, but he was her boyfriend. So what happened the day she went missing? The day that she went missing, her daughter had called me, like, the night before, texted me and wanted some clothes, but she couldn't get her mom. So I texted my daughter, and I told her, I said, you know, Callie's looking for you. Um, you need to call her. And I didn't think anything about it. And then later that night, her daughter texted me back, and she still hadn't got in touch with her mom. So I started making phone calls then. And then that was Saturday, Sunday morning. No one I talked to had talked to my daughter. And she still hadn't called me back. And the night before, I thought maybe she's at a party and she don't hear her phone. But when Sunday morning came and she didn't call me, you knew. then I panicked. Yeah, and you saw Brooks, the father of Crystal's two-year-old, driving the next morning, right, with the two-year-old in, in, in the car. Um, why did you think that that was notable, Brooke? Um, because if Crystal didn't have him, I did. He hardly The baby? Had, yes, he had the baby. So when he had the baby, red flags went up with me because if she wouldn't have left him. He says, Brooks, the, the boyfriend, he says... We, we had a small fight. Uh, she went out with friends. I didn't think anything of it because she often stayed overnight with friends. I mean, but she didn't. 
That's I, not true? No. I saw Brooks that morning when I went to the police department to report my daughter missing. And he, I passed him, so I got him to pull over. And he did pull over, and I went to his truck. And I asked him, I said, have you seen Crystal? And he said, no. And I said, well, did y'all have a fight or something? And he said, no, we had a little spat. He said, um, she kind of thinks I treated the other kids different than their baby they shared together. Mm -hmm. He said, and I can see where she gets that. And I said, but you haven't seen her or anything? And he said, no. And as he was talking to me, the baby popped his little head around the back seat and smiled at me. And when I saw that baby in that truck, I knew. I'm like, she would never leave that baby. Never. Mm -hmm. There is much more to this story. After the break, we're going to pick it up with another twist in this case. We'll be right back. And we're back now with more about the disappearance of Crystal Rogers. Crystal's mom, Sherry Ballard, is here, along with Crystal's sister, Brooke Bryan. Crystal's stories are re-examined in a new Oxygen series called The Disappearance of Crystal Rogers. And also joining us today are co-hosts Stephanie Bauer and Dwayne Stanton, a former detective with more than 750 homicide investigations under his belt and a 92% success rate. Yes, um, so it's good that you're involved in this, taking a look, not as official business, but sure. as, as journalists really looking into the case. Let me just ask you, Sherry, um, so your husband, your husband was the really, he was kind of the lead investigator on it, doing more than anyone. And suddenly he winds up shot to death. Yes, ma'am. Allegedly while hunting in what is being characterized as a death investigation now by, by the police there. Um, do you believe that, that, that it was an accidental shooting? No. Um, I've been told it wasn't accidental. And I know the moment I got the phone call, that it wasn't accidental. The police told us we're dealing with some very dangerous people to be careful, and my husband was being followed. Um, he told me that before, and but we had to do what we had to do to find my daughter, and that morning he was just hunting on our farm with my grandson. My grandson was standing right beside him when it happened. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that was that was just a technical thing. Sorry, it was an ill-timed technical thing. <laughs> a light, a light pop. I'm sorry. That was kind of scary. Um, so, I mean, can, what do you believe happened here? What do you believe happened? I believe someone wanted my husband out of the way. I think my husband was getting close. They knew my husband would never give up looking for my daughter, and I think he was a threat to them. And so, they, you think it was the same person who, who you believe took your daughter's life? In my opinion, I honestly do. Um, I mean, of course, they're, they're considering Brooks Houck, the, the Crystal's live-in boyfriend. He, we did get a statement from him. He, he said his followers from his lawyer, Mr. Houck has repeatedly, repeatedly, vehemently, and publicly denied any wrongdoing in connection with the tragic disappearance of Crystal Rogers and the death of her father. I've advised him that submitting to further interviews would serve no purpose and may further the pain to Ms. Rogers' family, who unfortunately seems focused on him as a suspect. Well, the police have also called him a suspect. And um, his brother, who was on the police force, actually took a lie detector test and, and reportedly failed. Um, so they haven't been able to make an arrest in the case, but they're obviously looking at these two. Dwayne, let me start with you on it. Um, why do you think they're not openly saying that the, the, the investigation into uh, Crystal's dad's death is a homicide investigation, is a murder investigation? Um, according to law enforcement on that particular case, they just don't know 100 percent that it is a homicide. The theory um, does present itself that it could be an accident. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to be proven one way or the other, and they just haven't done that yet. Stephanie, this series gets into not just the details of this case, and they're so, so far beyond what we could cover in these two blocks, but three other unsolved murders in this small, little, perfect town. Do, do you believe, is, is the theory that they might be connected somehow? Well, to be honest, when we arrived in town, beautiful town, a year ago, you can't imagine that all this tragedy has happened. But as soon as we got there, it was apparent. But you wonder, are these crimes connected? There was the murder of a Bardstown police officer, Jason Ellis, an ambush-style murder. Then following that, a year later, a mother and daughter are brutally murdered in their home. Then, of course, Crystal goes missing and Tommy is murdered. 
the fact that these could even happen in this small town is shocking. And when we got there, spent a lot of time there, the townspeople say, we think it's connected. This is not coincidences. One leads to another, and everyone's afraid. Dwayne, could it be a coincidence? Um, I don't believe in coincidences in criminal investigation. Any good detective would tell you there is no such thing as a coincidence in criminal investigation. So, no, I don't. What about the box of evidence uh, that your husband left behind? He left behind his clues that he didn't really want to give to law enforcement, but you have them. The, the box is, is huge. We had access to the box thanks to, to Sherry and her family. Um, I've never seen anyone in my career put together so much information, detailed information, and I talk about this in the series, um, categorized information, and it, Tommy put it together in such a way that it was easy to follow. And I'm sure when he put it together, he didn't know that we would be looking at it. But the few things that did come up that we didn't understand, we would go to Sherry, we would go to Brooke, or we would go to Casey and say, hey, what does this mean? And they could explain it to us. It was amazing what he did. It's incredible the aha moments he provided for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, and so sort of in a way has passed the baton um, so that this investigation stays open and that justice is brought um, to whoever took Crystal and whoever... If, if anybody murdered your husband. Thank you all. And Thank you. check out the series. Do want to tell you we reached out to the Kentucky State Police Department. They say they're actively investigating. Uh, but due to the nature of the open and ongoing investigations, they cannot discuss any details or updates. They say we've dedicated two full-time seasoned detectives to all of these cases in the Bardstown area. All the best to you guys. Good luck with it. Check it out on Oxygen. It's called The Disappearance of Crystal Rogers. This Saturday. Again, on Oxygen. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.